Fellas, and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of uh, the Chosen. My name is Saiken, and today we're continuing our Rise of the Robots campaign, where we can only take psionically active characters and sparks into the missions. And it's time for yet another retaliation mission. I did my homework and uh, practically thought about flying to the dark, uh, to the um, black market and essentially purchasing the last upgrade for our squad size. So without zero supplies, I also needed to sell, unfortunately, two or three Alarium and two Alloys. Not the best thing to do, but I barely managed to kind of squeeze in that sixth slot. And since we cannot use Hogbite on the mission, well, it's going to be a pretty dense fight. We're only having rookies available, plus, of course, our Spark. I figured it would be a good idea to have enough rookies um, that can work together with us. Halop and the DM will join us. And how about we're taking... Those two are tired. Hmm. Well, I suppose it doesn't make too much of a difference. Might as well take whatever rookie we can find. Those are tired and Russ is available. Perfect. So let's make utility items and weapons available. And we're starting from left to right. Hunk here definitely needs some more equipment. How about he's the guy with a battle scanner and a frag grenade. Sounds like a plan. He also gets a nice weapon. The DM, wait a second, the best weapon should be with uh, one of uh, the guys that does have a bond. In this case, the DM, who has a really good weapon. Might as well give him the Mimic Beacon. Halo here is the second person with a bond. Might as well give him the other weapon. We got Sonar. Sonar takes the flashbang and we do not have enough funds to do anything else. As for weapon upgrade, expanded magazine is the only thing that we do have for our spark. And Russ has autoloader plus stock. By thinking about it, I'll keep the expanded magazine for a little bit later. That's still fine. Uh, they do have okay equipment. So we got five rookies and one spark. Let's see if the spark can lead them to victory. Rookies are black. We don't want to de deviate from that. You did not earn a color, Sonar. You're a rookie at the end of the day. Perfect, good, here we go. Everybody is ready to rumble. And we're deploying. Here we go. All right, here we go again. So we're back in business, guys. We landed on a high ground, which is good. But at the same time, we're pretty far away from any action. So got to be a bit careful. Let's use our spark first. Just to stir up things a bit. And it didn't take long to do that. We have immediately found the enemies. Got a nice flashbang, just in case. Moving up here and let's trim the bushes a bit, shall we? Very nice. That gives us ample options to view, uh, to view the enemy. Good. Who's the team partner? Perfect.
Halop uh, needs to move up here. Wait, we got the superior repeater, right? Yeah, we well, want to save that one. We are continuing to take the high ground. There is no reason not to. It gives us the necessary advantage to shoot. Halo needs to go for the advent mech soon. But in order to do that... Let's first shred it. Very nice. The new he helix cannon is fantastic. Love it. I think we're going to use the flashbang grenade. Which in return means we gotta get some distance between us and this monster of a berserker. Halop has the superior repeater, highest chance to execute. Did work. Still okay. We're blocking the entrance over here so that the Berserk can't climb up. Take a good look. Nice little flashbang. And how about we're blocking the other entrance? That way the Berserk cannot immediately come up here and will waste time moving. Okay, or not. We might as well just charge, although I was pretty sure that that is not going to happen. Lapias, the hit could have been pretty nasty. But it's a low chance to hit when they are disoriented. Alright, we're moving up. I want to keep the momentum as great as high ground is. Gotta make sure that we always keep the momentum if possible. Let's start moving into cover. Good old 80% shot misses. That's what you're looking for. Russ also moves into cover. Let's try to feed the kill to Primus here. Very nice. That's more experience for him. And I want to use our battle scanner because we've brought them for a reason. Might as, might as well use them. Good, that's a real civilian, and this here looks like what? A uh, purifier, so probably a pack over here. Alright, moving over. Be careful 
We cannot allow them to kill too many. Two are already down. That being said, moving into the open with our spark. Knowing farewell that these guys are over there. If we're being too slow, we're going to regret it. If we're being too fast, we're going to regret it. The beauty of XCOM, no matter how you're playing it, there is a chance to definitely play it the wrong way. All right, blue moves. And we're taking a big fat overwatch trap. Still hoping that they will run into our line of sight. Which did not happen. Would have been great though. There is the purifier. Headed there now. Heading to that location. Are you kidding me? That's a typical setup where the game just wants you to pull multiple packs. There was no indication that another pack would have been there. Or was there any real good reason why they would be over there just standing and waiting? Okay, that did not work out. Team working into using our flank to our advantage, which worked out nice. Fifty-fifty to get that purifier down. I think we're going to take our chances. Come on, focus. No good. Pretty unlucky with the fifty fifties. I want to cluster up, which is why I'm taking and trying to take my distance. This here is far enough away, but that's probably the better position we can start flanking from here. Finally, the kill. if we want to use the rocket launcher the purifier here is of no threat the mech however could be of of a substantial threat I 
don't fully know where the mech is. I think it's behind here and we don't really get a great explosion angle on them. I'd rather save it for next round so that we can remove cover. That's a 60% chance, that's not bad. Could do something with it. Or alternatively, we can position ourselves a bit further back. Uh, overdrive soon up. Got a full cover over here, half cover. Well, we got the Mimic Beak in this turn, so might as well make the most out of it. Here we go, 60%. Unfortunate. Holy moly, we're in, in a world of pain. Okay, this here is a perfect grenade. Okay, good. Well, that was our Mimic Beacon. Uh, from now on, we have nothing left over. Meaning we'll better get that one right. Okay, so that would be probably the best hit. The mech is just barely out of range. Nah, we're, we'll try to hit all three of them. Uh, let's move to the side. I don't want the um, Berserk to hit us. That's a pretty solid hit. Can we... Hmm, that's not going to work out well. This is by far the best hit. Might as well kill this guy, which we did not. But we're close enough to throw a grenade. However, that would expose us to the Berserk. Moving the designated coordinates. Let's hit the mech. Could move up to here. But that would still not get us in range. On my way. Hmm. So, if we were to hit this guy, we'd only kill one additional enemy. That's not good enough. We need to clean the battlefield and we need to clean it this round. A grenade would probably hit 
hit and kill three of them. The big issue that I'm seeing is the Berserk though. We're just a few feet away from it. Don't want to stand in the open. But the punishment for failing this will be even worse, much worse. Let's start trying the mech, uh, trying to take out the mech because this guy with the rockets is a is an insured catastrophe. Question that I'm asking myself is Will this be close enough? Could move up to here. move all the way up to here that's full cover but it's almost as far away as we currently are what can we do from the other side would this here with a grenade be a kill gotta move very close very close Question is, is this here close enough? And we're leaving a flanking position open. Could instead move over here. Just have a really nice flank. That's some solid full cover here. Sona could move up into full cover. Hunk could move into full cover. Which then in return would leave our um, spark pretty exposed. We gotta take more pieces off the plate. And we got one, two, three of our own pieces to do that. Optimal case, throw grenade, kill three, move in here and kill this guy. But that optimal P, uh, that optimal case would probably just not materialize. We can't escape the berserk, so might as well move up closer. Lots of pretty good shots. Oh, this one here is a not so great shot, but still okay. He can flank us regardless, he could move up there and flank us, so might as well position ourselves. Hmm. Hunk could die doing that. There's still a civilian, which is a better target. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How far can he throw? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11. And on the flat ground, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Still eleven. Okay, good. Because from here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He would only need to throw to here, though. Okay, cool. Then that is enough. Pretty aggressive move. Not good. Not good. Okay, we might lose that one turn. Let's kill the purifier. Perfect. That didn't work out. Of course, it did not. Already scratched the idea that this guy will die. Purifier might not be a problem. Let's get that stun monster. Okay. And now the question is, shall we take full cover? Just accept that the purifier can do something or shall we go for the purifier? We're going to get mauled by by the Berserk regardless, so might as well make sure that we take as many pieces off the table as possible. That's down to two. This is not a flanking shot, this is a straight up shot into them and the Berserk now will probably move in and do his dirty deed. Okay, well, that was close. Closer than I would have wanted it to be. Oh wow, okay, cool. Or not. I don't like taking chances in XCOM. I like to play it controlled. Alright, let's flank him. That's a nice critical hit to deal with him once and for all. Sonar optimizes his action economy. Reloads, takes a shot. We can't escape the Berserk anyways. Um, earlier in XCOM you could kite them but that's no longer a thing he has not yet lose use his uh, free auto loader but we want to make sure that we're hitting the berserk so let's take the tiny step back just so that we're in cover just in case and still hit him there is the execution, perfect. And it, by chance, just happened to be the last enemy on the map. Good. We're positioning ourselves here. Let's take a couple of shots. It's unfortunately a miss. The EDM moves up. Good. Time for some overdrive. Primos might as well be able to kill him just by himself. 
That's one action. Second for reload. And let's kill this guy. Oh, come on. A lot of 80% shots that have been missing during uh, this during this combat specifically. But yeah, you gotta still be able to deliver even if your shots are missing. And when it comes to Overwatch, I by the, at this point do not even bother to think about hitting. Every hit is a bonus. Good. Probably not the cleanest mission. I'm the first one to admit that. Admit that. But then again, there's only so much you can do with only rookies. There we go. Solid kill. That's another very good hit. And Halo Pierre hopefully finishes it. Good. What's up? That is it, guys. Closer than expected because we only had seven civilians left. Good. Very good. <clears throat> oh, wow. Rookie only, with a spark, of course. Mission in. The only one who is not having a promotion is the spark. Disappointing. But yeah, we got a lot of civilians rescued. Got a few corpses. And it was the right decision to take the sixth member into the team. 21 supplies permanently. That is nice. We're now at 400 supplies per month. Thanks to winning all of the retaliation missions. That's really good. We got a soldier here, which is really nothing that we would want to have. How about... What would it cost us? Oh yeah, 100 supplies. Hmm. Four more days. How about we're scanning for one day, getting 100 supplies, and then starting to build the tower. Sounds like a good idea. I wanted to leave the supplies so much so that we would save time by not scanning through them. Aliens now have guaranteed reinforcements on all guerrilla ops missions. Oh, that's a bit a problem. By the way, here's an additional guerrilla ops mission just so that we can counter additional effects. Starting to build the tower here which isn't bad either. Suit up is a really nice bonus. All armor and vest projects are crea uh, created instantly. And this year is, oh wow, this is good. Resistance network, contact is uh, made instantly. We definitely want that. So next continent that we're getting is North America. That's a problem. If we're going to slow them down, we'll need to move fast. We have made a number of new discoveries. We got ourselves a pretty decent breakthrough with the blue screen rounds. As far as I can tell, they're fully automated and armed to the teeth. Berserkers could be used for grenade upgrades. Elarium currently is not available, but that is for plasma weapons. So in the limelight of that, let's get the Berserk next. No, not Berserk, Mutant, of course, next. And then we're going to follow the gold path until we get more Elarium and Alloys, which is desperately needed at this point. Having a bit of a problem with the Avatar time in this run. Luckily for us, the month's just ended and we did pretty well. 
So the second chosen now can summon stun lancers and you can already see we're getting closer to that threat level where we are being shot down. Two times sabotage on the Avenger. Attempt to sabotage. Oh, he can no longer sabotage. Okay, cool. We're only one sabotage and permanently lowering the income. That is a problem. We gotta fix the major breakthrough. That is a problem as well because it leads to the exact same uh, result. A new facility will bring further pain for us. And we cannot use anything else here. Should upgrade the the resistance ring so that we at least have a second resistance order three days for 600 supplies at least we got the school jack that's a start so we can combat the current um, avatar project with that let's choose our project I think we're going to go for blue screen protocol and we'll do that in nine days because I really value it. Yes, clearing the alien machinery here will be important and that's all fine and good, but we got to get um, some of the core tools so that our fights will become easier. All right. Perfect. Got ourselves more intel. So, what else? Breakthrough research. Um, digital network upgrade at the resistance ring costing 50% less. Yeah, that's just 50... Um, 50 supplies so that's not really good that's oh, okay loot is good counter chosen activity would be fantastic but all of that is unavailable so in reality we either do have this digital network construction mm -hmm. a bit meh to be honest And then we got soldier cohesion. That's not too bad for for two psi operatives, but yet again we do not have that those yet. This is the biggest problem in this run. Getting those covert actions going. So yeah. I suppose we can do that digital run. But we don't need a soldier with a bond for that. We can simply take this random rookie here. Or let's take someone who actually can use the plus one hit point whom we're going to use. How about Hunk? Yep, that sounds like a good idea. Hunk and Raul are going into it. And we got one of our scientists so yeah in nine days we can upgrade this year for half of the price <laughs> yay maybe it's also half of the requirements for energy that would be something at least but other than that Yeah, we're a bit short on engineers. I would really like to continue excavating and getting more materials, but we've done so many breakthroughs uh, last month. Maybe it just feels like it's a bit of a stalling out. That's natural uh, when you have had such a role. Last month we got all of the goodies that we're now working with. We need a supply rate to do something about the alloys and the alarium. I hope the game will recognize this. 
and will give us a supply rate. We now have the option for a plasma grenade. Improved magnetic weapons aren't bad. I am contemplating taking that. It's another plus one straight up on all magnetic weapons in exchange for nine days of research. That's already almost as good as the plas uh, plasma tier. Matter of fact, it is as good as the plasma tier since we already had a breakthrough uh, for the assault rifles. So yeah, let's take that. Good. Yeah, okay, black market gear doesn't really matter. Good. Are we going for a guerrilla ops mission, an extra guerrilla ops mission? Is that something that we want? Probably not. I would like to make contact. We're missing a few intel. The best way to get a bit of intel is just flying down there, scanning ones so that we get intel and then we're moving over because the Avatar project is still so much going on. Can't let that slip away. Finally. Ooh, that is good. Good. We need 15 Hilarium and five more energy, but I'm willing to pay that. Holy moly, am I willing to pay that? Good. So if we are normally doing this, it'll take 25 days. That's unfortunately not doable so minus 50 percent it is that's down to 13 days see and this guys is why the psyleb rash a rush is also a problem hear me out for a second and uh we're, we're still going to go with it but uh you can see just how many resources it consumes right so first and foremost the psyleb itself is five energy then another five energy because you want effectively two training chambers let's be honest with that so that's already 10 energy which means you probably need to put two of your engineers onto the power relay just to feed that one hungry hungry building and i already got plus three power just for free so that we're so to speak still in the mix then if you want to train the operatives, you got to put another uh, engineer in here. So that's three engineers just to have the training of these guys regularly going on, which will in return, of course, slow down the rest of your building. 70 days here for clearing the alien machinery is just insane. We got all of the basic buildings, so it's not that that's the end of the world. Uh, don't get me wrong, but here you can see why this building, why it's not a valid strategy on legendary Iron Man normally to do that. Had I not put laboratory in place to make sure that we're really, really solidly ahead of the curve with the research, and had I not made uh, sure that we purchase engineers just so that we're also ahead in the engineer game, although at the end we're still at four, a little bit bad RNG, but I invested a lot of time to make sure that we have enough engineers going, then this year in June wouldn't even be possible. So just keep that in mind. We're now three and a half months in, the enemies are ramping up and we're just barely starting to train them. And you can see that the Larium is still the main um, limiting factor for our strategy here, right? So. I'm wondering, since we don't have two cells, if it is actually more efficient for now to just go and excavate. This will get us Elarium. Soon the blue screen protocol will be done, then we can continue excavation here and it will hopefully get it down to, I think, 17 days. So all of a sudden that's a bit more doable, but we got to get that inflow and continue to get that inflow going, right? Good, what else do we have? 
we have an engineer so it's probably what we would want to have we just talked about it advent uh, troopers under advent only leadership yay we just love advent only leadership but then again can we really really afford two blocks of progress on the other hand let me think about it hmm. so we're already at maximum almost so that major breakthrough really wouldn't be the end of the world we can simply use our school check the next time that there is a mission popping up and we can also engage with the facility high concentration of robotic enemies on the other hand would be fantastic hmm I like the intel as well and this here stings difficult means however that we're fighting the chosen again let's take a look at our soldiers hogbite might be able to participate yeah i i will take a look i will take a look i i don't want to rush that decision now this is a difficult one i think we're going for that extra engineer i mentioned it beforehand we're a bit starved just based on that setup very soon we we require two additional engineers here and if we want another spark we need to continue having an engineer here so that spark slash psi rush is very very resource hungry and i gotta find ways of dealing with it right okay cool other than that i think we're fine uh, the improved magnetic weapons are soon going to come we soon also gonna get blue screen protocol which then in return allows us to build blue screen rounds fantastic fantastic ability and yeah we got a psi lab so sooner or later the psi operatives will be coming online and that's what you wanted to see sparks and psi operatives so we're on a good way guys thank you for watching if you like how the run is going and if you enjoy the content hit the like button and subscribe slash post a comment down below that helps the channel to grow and motivates me to continue the work thank you bye bye